Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to go through how to use Timeline in Camelot Pro. Before I start, if you have not subscribed yet, please do so as that will help the channel with bringing more videos, tutorials and giveaways. Okay, perfect. So we are inside uh, Camelot Pro. Let's use the Sound for More set list, one which I previously created, and let's add a new song. We click on the plus sign and we select from scratch. We call that just um, song. Why not? And we click on the proceed button. Now, that brings us inside song with, with a new scene. Now, let's go back to songs. Let's remove the previous one. So we click on the three dots and select remove. So we have just song. Okay, so let's double click on song. As you have seen in uh, the previous tutorial, this opens the song in scene mode here. So you can see there is only one scene. So let's click on the edit button and let's change that scene name to scene one. And let's click on proceed. Let's also create another one from scratch and we call that scene two as well and uh, there is a reason why i create two scenes because i will use both of them in the timeline if you recall from the previous video if you double click on the scene it will move you to the layers uh, tab where you can see layers um, organized in this way but we'll cover uh, that in another video so let's go back to the scenes and if you click in this on this icon here you can move to the timeline as you can see at the bottom here. When you move to the timeline, you have the transport on. So let's just click here where it says transport to remove uh, the transport uh, bar. As you can see from the top, we still have our set list view, song and sing as a reference. You can move left and right here. If you click on the right here, you can move to the next scene, which in this case would be scene two. We still have our uh, normal buttons for undo, redo here, save, and then our menu to add additional things, edit, copy, etc., etc. So here you see the timeline um, view, and you can use uh, your mouse or fingers to move across the timeline, like so, which is useful. You can see also uh, a reference here with start and end in terms for your looping. And here you have a zoom uh, tool, which you can see, you can use to zoom in and out, very useful. And then here you have um, a screen divided between back in tracks timeline, the same timelines and also markers. So let's start with the back in tracks. First of all, if I click on the edit pencil here, open, I can edit the, pos the name of the song, but then I can edit also the position like so between back in track scenes and mark. And when I finish, I click on done. I can do the same just clicking on back in track. Okay. As well, I can do the same just uh, clicking on the edit on the markers. Okay. Now let's try to add something on back in tracks. And actually let's move the back in track at the top again. Okay, perfect. So let's click on the plus sign. This is where you enter uh, the menu of adding a new backing track. You can you have a group which is referenced as your uh, all your files. So you can click on it. And here you will have a list of your uh, files which you previously imported or loaded. You can also search for them. You can go back and you can also add a group and you give it a name and also a color, which is useful. And you can also go to the audio file managers here where you can see all the files which are uh, in use and used wave mp3 or all of them and you can select some of them add the selected one or delete the selected ones but now let's go to the my audio files and let's click on load audio files and let's load one song in this case magic moment it will say importing files that file is being imported inside uh, Camelot Pro. As you can see, it has been imported. Now it's asking me, where do you would like, where would you like to add 
the backing track at what position in the timeline in minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Or you can choose a position which is um, where you will say you will see additional markers moving forward. For now, let's add it to the start. And um, you can also click on start here and it will go to that marker, okay, which correspond in this case to the start. Let's click done. And as you can see, that song has been, or that uh, um, WAV file, audio file has been loaded and inside the backing tracks timeline. Now, if you double click on the header here, you can see a minimized version of the backing tracks timeline. So let's double click on that. And you can also use the arrows here, like so. You can decide where the song will, or the audio file will start to play. So you can move it like that. And where it will end to play. And you can also have fade in and also fade out. So as uh, you prefer. So let's keep it simple, uh, perhaps a little bit like that, like so. Okay. You can add multiple backing tracks. So let's go back to the to the um, menu where we can add additional one. And let's click on the plus sign and let's load this bass drop. Okay, and let's position it a little bit uh, further away, like so. Now, if you made a mistake in terms of positioning a back in track, just click on it and hold until it becomes gray, and then you can move it. Okay, so it's very, very simple. Now, you have additional control here. You have volume, of course, for each one of them independently. You can, uh, uh, of course, turn uh, the audio off, or you can also solo some of them. As well like so okay so that becomes uh, really really handy okay so let's try so let's bring up the transport control go back to the beginning and play As you can hear, the bass drop started to play when, of course, the cursor um, or the playhead has arrived to the bass drop, okay, uh, to the bass drop audio file. Now, in a similar way, let's minimize this, you can add scenes, and we're not going to look in detail into scenes now. We look at scenes and how to use them properly when we have gone through layers. But it's fair to say that you can click on the plus sign, add a scene, again, it will ask you, which position and uh, you can add also multiple ones so let's move these a little bit further away and the reason they become important is because you can associate a layer than an instrument per scene and you can play with different instrument and it will change from one scene to the other and as in doing so it will change also the instrument as you can see it has added um, um, markers here or position changer here at the top so you can click on one and move like so and then you can uh, change the position of scene two, and you can do the same for scene one, like that. Okay, so let's scroll further down. You have markers now, a markers timeline. So let's click on the plus sign. Here we'll ask you to add a name and an annotation. So let's try, we can say uh, point A, um, we can write test, uh, description and then we have three types of markers a label marker a play marker and a stop marker so the label marker is just a, a reference point which you can use to move songs to and uh, the play marker will ensure that when you move to that marker it will start to play and the stop marker will ensure that when you get to that marker it will stop to play so let's click next and let's add a just a label market like so you can still move move the marker, click on here, and you can move it like so, okay? And um, and then you can use it, for example, to move your song. So the, expand that, and then you can click and hold on the bass drop. As you can move, you see it will have a, like a magnet around that marker, which is um, really handy. Uh, additionally, if you're adding another backing track next time, 
Well, I can show you that if you click on the uh, plus sign here, you go to another audio file. And let's say we're going to add bass drop again, add selected. Now you see also point A as a marker, so you can click on it. It will change the position on the timeline, click done, and you will have another one added, which will start at the position of that label um, marker. So that is really handy. And if you scroll down, you see here on the markers timeline, point A, with the, the description, which in this case was a test description. So that is your marker. At the same time, you can add a different type of uh, markers. So let's try the others as well. So let's add a stop marker. Okay, and the position is somewhere like so. And um, the stop marker is this one. So let's ensure that that is somewhere there, like so. And then let's also add uh, a play marker. And let's position it a little bit further away, like so. Perfect. So let's see what happens now. I'm going to scroll up, and you will see that uh, the play will stop when it will reach the play marker, so the stop marker. And then you will see that um, if I move to the next, um, uh, if I move it forward, um, because the next marker is the play marker, it will start automatically to play. So let me show you. As you can see, it has stopped uh, playing. Now, if I go to the next marker, like so, it will start to play because the next marker is the play marker. On the other hand, if I was to double click that play marker and remove it, if uh, I position now my play head here, okay, I click play, it will get to the stop marker first. And it will stop. Now, if I move to the next marker, it will move to the next marker, but it will not start to play because that is just, it is not a play marker. So, hopefully, you found these uh, useful in terms of how the timeline works. And uh, I see you at the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.